Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 40 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you here. And it is a cold, wet, rainy day in the middle of winter here in Pangasus Bay. <laughs> well, that's not going to dampen our spirits because we've got a lot to talk about today. I am so excited to be uh, presenting to you a new mini series, if you will. Now, we're looking across our downtown area and that we built out in a series of episodes uh, quite some time ago now over to the Consular District. The Consular District is this big patch of uh, land out here, this big area that we haven't touched since episode one. If you remember in episode one, we built out the Leggett's Curve area where we were just kind of exploring with the game and learning how to play. And one of the things I did is I had knocked down that big bridge that comes, you know, as the standard you know, package, if you will, for this map, knocked down that big bridge and created that freeway that made its way around here. And I did so because I long envisioned having this space be the seat of our government for the local Pangasus Bay metropolitan area. After 41 or 40, yeah, 41 previous episodes, now we're in episode 42. I'm finally getting around to that. <laughs> it's been a long journey, but certainly a lot of fun. So let's dive in there and take a look at it. This is a huge, huge area, and I'm going to be doing this build in a series of episodes. And I've broken each of these areas out into certain spaces that I want to, I've already kind of named and planned out, and I want to take you through them just so you get a sneak preview of what it is that we're intending to do in the series. This first little area down here, this quadrant, if you will, we're going to call this Vesper Beach. And the Vesper Beach area is going to be uh, an area where we've got offices that are up and around this area here because I would think there's going to be a lot of administration that's going to have to happen in the uh, kind of the local area for the seat of government. And then we'll probably weave in some, you know, some nice, elegant, beautiful beach style homes in here, maybe some medium density tucked in behind it, uh, maybe some commercial and so forth down along this area as well. Vesper Beach, an elegant neighborhood. The center section is called the Promenade. The Promenade is going to feature our, our government administration building up in here. And I've got my eye on a couple of different assets that I might want to try out there. I think that'll be great. And then this rectangular area here with this flaring couplet, if you will, is going to be uh, probably a big decorative element, a big walking promenade down through this area here, but flanked up again with a lot of administrative offices that make their way down through this area. Now, we've had a couple of viewers suggest some sort of uh, park establishment down here on the end, and I'm thinking with this circular element that we have across the bay, we might want to replicate or give a nod to another circular element down in this space. We'll just see about that. Now, I want to run back over to this area, too, as, as you look down this promenade. I had planned this a long time ago, how I want this thing to lay out. So as you look at their, our government buildings that are going to be sitting in here, they're going to have a nice, clear, unobstructed view to that observation tower across the way. All right, continuing on our little journey, this area down in here, we're going to call this Minister's Stead, Minister's Stead. And it's named because it's yeah right up against this farmstead that's out over in this area here. But you're going to have a lot of maybe ministry offices that are sitting down in here with some medium density residential and maybe a few low density residential or commercial or something along this area in here just to kind of break it up. In fact, maybe commercial is a better idea. I don't know. This is a different episode. You know, we're going to take advantage of this road that comes down here along our farms. I've already dropped in a little placeholder road here so that maybe we can create an overpass to come back into this area. And then also, I think we have the opportunity to extend this road and bring that across into the stead as well. So got to create some access there. That should be fun. And then jumping into this space here, we're going to call this one Island View Park. Island View Park. And it's named because you have this beautiful view of this little island out here, our South Pass Isle. And then I want to kind of replicate that build style over in this space. So lots of medium to high density residential in this space here. Kind of jam it in with a lot of bodies. You'd want to have a lot of people that are working in this in and around this area as your seat of government. And then the final piece here that I want to talk about is the Old Northeast. And the Old Northeast, I'd like to do uh, kind of a more of an elegant upscale 
Maybe there's there's medium density down in here, some offices along there, maybe some lower density with some elegant estate homes uh, up along the shore here, just to create this this kind of this old stately piece of elegance that's going to be part of this uh, this government district. Yeah, so that's kind of the build plan again as you walk through here, and, and I listed those in no particular order. But the subject of today's build is going to be that that promenade area, if you will, the center part of it. And that'll be our, our kind of our kickoff to the entire consular district. All right, that concludes our little tour, if you will, of the consular district. I hope you guys are excited about this as well. This is going to be a really great mini series that's going to feature just a variety of different build styles and techniques. And it's going to add a lot of additional density, if you will, to Pangasas Bay. A lot more residents are coming in, a lot more jobs, and a nice big focal piece for this side of the bay. All right, well, I threw a ton at you guys. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to dive in and tackle this big roundabout area here. This has been sitting here since episode one, and it's high time we did something productive here. <laughs> so this is where we're going to put our big seat of our government building, and, and that's going to be coming from our Parks and Recreation tab. And then we're going to jump over to our Landmarks tab, and you're going to see the National Diet Building. This building is where both houses of the Japanese legislature, the National Diet, meet. And it's located in Tokyo. Building was completed in 1936 and is constructed almost solely out of Japanese materials, which I think is really cool. It gives us a nice little bonus to outdoor recreation and it's got a high attractiveness score. So that's going to sit kind of in the centerpiece here. But before we can do that, we're going to have to take out some of these extra gravel roads. So I want to start over here and take these two out and maybe this guy here. We'll leave this one for now for now no let's take that one out too maybe uh we'll just take then the sh shift terrain tool i want to bring the elevation up man eh, not that much but i just want to pick one that's about eight or so one two three four five six seven eight nine ish contour lines up and then i'm going to fill in the space so sit tight there now the idea is i want this diet building to sit up on this hill up here and i think the way we're going to execute that is I'm going to take an alley road that comes out of the center of this one here. I just want to run this up. I guess I can't put it on that slope, so I'll have to use that as a center line. Oops. Yeah, something like this. And just go click one little notch there. I think that should be fine. Uh, and then I'll come out of that one, say back here, just to create up a space. And then uh, from here, I can run out in this direction. And this direction. There. Okay. So then I've got that in place. I can clear that piece out. And when I do so, now I can come in with a one lane, one way road and make sure that I'm in the squares here and just run right along. Eh, I think something like this is probably going to be okay. Yeah, that'll work. And now I can come back in and clear these three out. And I can grab that National Diet building. Just drop that in right here. Now let's hope we can center that up. Yeah, see now how it's centered up on this little Madison Lane here. And it looks right straight across out here to our observation tower. I like it. And then as far as this way goes, it's not quite centered up, but it's pretty close. I think I like that, though. All right, now we have to create access for this. So let's see. I think what I'm going to do is something a little bit more decorative. You've got these beautiful curves that are sitting in front of this building here. I want to do something kind of curvy out in front here too. So I've got some thoughts. So then I think what we can do next is we need to attach this Evergreen Street to this Umber Street. And the way I want to do that is first come back in and uh, bring our terrain back down to where it was previously. So sit tight while I do that. There. And now we're left with this apron that kind of makes its way all the way around the building. Just because of the way the assets are designed here in City Skylines 2, you've got this slope that comes down here. And we can come back in and, and smooth that slope out a little bit. But as I come back to the other side here, as I'm looking up the promenade, or maybe down the promenade, towards the diet building, you can see that this is elevated up here just ever so slightly if I get down here. Yeah, and it becomes a really iconic piece here as you're making your way up the promenade. So that's going to be really cool. Now. Let's come back over here and figure out how we're going to tie these streets in. So the first thing I thought about is let's just create a road that is in alignment. Turn this off in alignment with the existing street, just because I need to have a placeholder road. And so I don't lose my place. And then I'm going to delete this road. I want to come in here with a shift terrain tool 
uh, decrease our brush size down to about 50 and de dig down just a little bit in front here. And I'll take a level terrain tool. I'll grab an elevation that's maybe just above sea level and I want to push that right straight through here. Just try and sharpen this up a little bit. Now the reason I want to do that is I want to take this one lane one way road and decrease my steps and I'm going to come in right into this space here and I want to bring this up until I get that key wall thing that engages and then I'll just come from here. Yeah, that's probably a good spot. And then how far is it to the center piece? Well, it's 36, 28, somewhere in between. Maybe we'll just go a total of 60 meters here. Yeah. And when I did that, it created this nice little key wall effect or retaining wall effect that sits in front of the uh, of the approach. Now, my thought process was I'd like to take these curves and just use uh, use that as kind of a design style element and do that something similar in this space here, kind of create a curved entrance and approach. And before I do that, I want to come back in now with our level terrain tool. Let's just bring this back to its original position. That restores that apron. We can get rid of this little cypress street here. Yeah, that's going to restore the apron, and I think it looks good. And then we can take our one lane, one way road. We're going to put on a, just a simple curve. And I want to come out of this intersection right here. Yeah, that's probably a good spot uh, right there. And I would draw this line out so it goes past our, our centerpiece road here and then bend straight up into this one. And I'll use this piece. Let's see, what's it what's it hitting up there? Looks like there's, there's a connection line that comes through. So let's go ahead and use that as a guideline. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to come back over here. Maybe this one. Draw past our center line. Come right up into there and use that guideline that it's throwing at me as well. I'll reverse this. And now you can see we have a symmetrical kind of a an apron approach that comes up this uh, anchor street, if you will. And as I step back here, it looks pretty cool. And you've got the curves that are playing here and the curve that's playing there. That's really nice. And then now I don't need this centerpiece anymore. I can come back in with my softened terrain tool. I can grab an elevation down low here and then come right here and just kind of smooth things out a little bit, just ever so slightly, nice and gently. Nice, okay. Wow, that's really starting to take shape, huh? So let's jump over to the other side of the building now and we can build out an approach to this. I think it's going to be really kind of cool. I want to frame up the, uh, you know, the, the government building with a pedestrian walkway. So uh, there's a couple things I need to do. One, I want to take a pedestrian road. Let's see here. One of these, decrease my steps all the way down. And then I also wanted to get rid of the snap to zoning cell length. And I just want to put in a placeholder road here. So let's bring this up to... Uh, let's go seven and a half. Just bring this out. Whoops. Let's start just a little further away. There we go. Just to put this into place. Okay. That's good. Now we can get rid of this little centerpiece road here. And then bring this out so that... Here, let's just turn off all of these. Just come right out so it's almost touching this road. And then skips across here. Just slightly. Yes, and now it can begin its descent and come all the way back down to this road right here. And I think what I'll do is I'll I'll bring it down to a point just a little shy of that and then just have it just connect straight into that. Yeah, and it's going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a wonkiness there, but that's okay. And now what I need to do is come in here and kind of frame up the the uh, the diet building. And I want to do that by kind of digging down just a little bit. I think I'll take our elevation that's around, say, sea level, this white line here. And I want to press this elevation all the way around the building. Yeah, something like that. And then that'll allow us to come back in with another pedestrian street, set our elevation to about five now, and snap to the back of this building. But I want to line it up here and just run right out in this direction here until I get to that point where right there you see that, that that compass that came into play right there and uh, this what this is going to do is it's going to give us uh, it's going to give us a retaining wall on the outside and get right to the edge of the building so if I do that and then just run right straight down this side here until I hit the next one which is there yeah and now we can do the same thing on the other side yeah 
And now what that's done is it's created a nice little frame around the building. You can see it kind of gently declines in the corners here, but that's okay. I think, I think we're all right with that. And then let's come back in here and raise our elevation back up to our original elevation. And now I can attach this piece into here. So I'll just once again grab our pedestrian street, come right out of the center of this, and then just, uh, let's see here. It's gonna create a little bridge, I guess, and that's, I guess we have to be okay with that. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Just a little gentle decline coming down there. And in fact, we could even make maybe an access that comes down here and makes this a gardens as well. All right, so now how do we reattach this wall over here? What I'd like to do is be able to kind of bring this corner into this little crosswalk area, or maybe, maybe right in here somewhere. So let's see how to figure out how to do that. Yeah, uh, I think what I'd like to do is slope this terrain back down over to here. So let's just take our little slope terrain tool, make sure that we're flattened out pretty good in this space first, I guess. Let's do that. And then we can slope down to this space here. So let's grab this height. Yeah, and let's repeat that process over here on the other side. Yeah, something like that. And then now we can come back in with our little pedestrian road. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is put it onto a curve of some uh, sort, like a little simple curve. We're gonna take it out 48 meters till it kind of wants to overlap with that road. And then we'll bend this into this little corner, this intersection right here. Let's do that. 48 and 78. Let's see if we can do something similar on the other side. Yeah, there we go. And now let's just draw a straight line between these two, these two points here. One here to one here. And if I come in here, does it look straight? Eh, it's a little wonky. Let's just, uh, we'll clean that up. Looks like it's striking at slightly different points. So I think we can clean that up too. Let's just give it another pass. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Uh, we can smooth that out during the time lapse, but I think it's all in all pretty good. And now we've got walking access all the way around our National Diet Building. And then we'll come back in here and yeah, smooth these kind of edges out and so forth just to just to make that look a little nicer and neater but yeah now we've got this big retaining wall that makes its way all the way around i think that's going to look pretty cool yeah all right so we can focus our attention now down here onto the promenade itself we've got some natural attach points here that i'd like to take advantage of say for example these crosswalks right here hmm, i wonder if we can yeah we probably don't want to remove those stoplights but let's just grab a pathway here and see if i can stem off of uh yeah maybe can i come out of here no can i come out of here no nah, it doesn't like that either but i can come right out of there so i'm going to drive this all the way down through our neighborhood if we can all the way down to this street down here make sure i'm staying at a good 90 degree angle all the way through do the same thing on the other one that's just right next to it yeah like that and then that gives us a nice little, uh, nice little piece there to, you know, to to be a center focal piece. Now, um, the idea here too is I would want to come back in. How far apart are these? Whoops. Uh, let's see here. They're 13 meters. Okay. Well, I'd like to create a series of kind of squares, if you will, that are this 13 meters, and then come down here. You know, maybe it's I don't know, about there. Yeah. And then if I did that, because it's kind of the centerpiece, if you will, of this block, eh, let's try and move it over just a just a hair more, is have it be the centerpiece of this block, and then have that carry all the way through to this street here. Yeah. And then we'll do the same thing in this central block here, this other lar longer block. I want to make sure that this is a very walkable area in here, because this can all be decorative gardens kind of making its way down the center here and then probably a little bit more in the way of decoration along this side here as well but then this will be office buildings and, and so forth in here let's take uh let's take this road out and let's take this road out now let's just see here can i come in maybe from here yes that leaves me with big squares out here i'll do the same thing on this other side yeah, and now let's let's come back in with our sidewalks. I 
I'd like to come in here now and grab some uh, commercial zones. Let's go high density North American style commercial zones. And I want to be able to do in some some really nice big ones in here. Let's go like, um, hmm. let's do a, a six by six there. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. Okay, that'll be that'll be pretty cool. And then that'll allow me to come in with a, uh, let's grab a European style, high density housing piece. And I want to put that right into this corner here because I think it would look really cool overlooking this park. So let's do that. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Well, that didn't that didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. So let's do this. There we go. That's going to be a six by six piece. Ooh, it's going to be a tall one. Nice. And then let's come back in here with maybe a couple of offices too. Uh, but let's go low density offices. And I want to paint in oh, a nice big six by six right in here. Let's do another high density North American retail right there. And go another six by six office here. Yeah. And so we'll kind of create this nice little pattern of buildings that look like they could be very administrative in, in functionality. All right, let's do the same thing on the other side over here. Let's grab a couple more of those high density North American commercials. There we go. There we go. And then we'll drop in a couple more offices. Oh, in fact, those are our high density residential demand. It's not not looking good. Not looking good. Okay, that's fine. Let's drop in an office building here. Six by six. We'll drop in another office here in six by six. And now I'm, you know, I'm maxing out my demand. You can see our demand meters are diving, but that's okay. I want this kind of medium density look to uh, to flank up this this park area in here. In fact, now I could probably even grab a, a medium density, European style, medium density. Let's see if we can do a six by six in there. Yeah, they're gonna have that kind of that old world look, if you will, in this space. Okay, all right. So our medium density demand must be pretty low as well. That's okay, that's okay. We'll come back in with some more commercial just to fill it in. Uh, let's see, North American high density. We'll drop you in right there and there. And then we'll come back in. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to leave that one open. And we'll drop one in right there. Oh, three small ones. That's fine, too. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Now, these are going to start to fill in. Ooh, that's big. Yeah, that's really big. But it's going to create this, this nice framework and in this alley almost, this little alleyway area here where I can come in and, and really detail this up really nicely to make this a big ah, just a majestic plaza and you'll have lots of these big buildings kind of flanking up the outside of it I'm looking forward to seeing how these these all fill in okay so now those buildings have filled in and I don't know. I, I don't think it's quite the look I was going for. Not quite the look I wanted. In fact, I really like what these will eventually turn into. These low density office buildings. They turn into these four story buildings that are going to be about as tall as you see this concrete line here on this building. That's about how tall they get. And that's really what I was looking for. I think this is, yeah, that's still, that's probably too tall to be along this, this big park here. So my thought is, I think I'll come back in during the beautification time lapse and, and, and just knock down these taller buildings and put in those offices and let them grow in. In fact, let me take you on a quick little trip across the bay to uh, Crestwind Cape, I believe. We have these same little buildings that are down here, and this is more the look I'm going for. You can see these four-story buildings right in here. They kind of have this administrative look about them, you know, and, and, and this is as tall as they get. I think if we do that, and then we come back in behind them, with some of these taller buildings that kind of peek over the top of them. It could create this really nice valley look, if you will, with the taller buildings and then the lower buildings and then the flat area out here with the park. And then of course, progressing back up just a little bit of height here. And as you dive back across to downtown, then this will really create a nice little, you know, valley, a height valley, if you will, and really frame up that National Diet building well. Yeah, okay. And then let's just jump back down in here into the park 
I want to create a, a really lovely, elegant walking mall out of this whole area here. And, um, you know, I think we can use a lot of our new tools that we got. We got uh, these, well, I'm not going to use debris, but we'll probably use some of the surfaces, maybe some rocks. I definitely want to use some of these park assets. You've got gazebos and fountains and a little small stage, uh, little kiosks, maybe food trucks or something. So there's a lot of different assets I can use to come in here and really build out this warm community space in here. Potted plants, I'm looking forward to using those as well. It's just planters in, into corners and so forth. I think that would be really cool. Oh, residential props, look at this, wow. I haven't even had a chance to look at all of this stuff yet and there's just a ton. This is, oh, this is really cool. Tables, <laughs> vending machines and newspaper boxes. as well. That's, that's a great idea. Uh, so lots of different things that we can explore now with the detailers uh, pack that we just got. And then uh, let's make our way back up to the uh, the government building. I think I want to turn this into a nice little gardens out front here too. Really something elegant and lush that uh, is beautiful, but I don't want to get too much height out there because I don't want to get into the sight line of the National Diet Building. And then let's scoot around to the other side here. We definitely need to you know, change the elevation on all of this. And I want to clean this front entrance up a little bit. I think I, I like the style, the design style, but it's just, uh, it's a little, it's a little messy yet. And so I think we can do a better job just tidying that up. And then maybe a beautiful floral entrance here that brings you into the city. Oh, that's a really cool look. Yeah, I think this is going to turn out really nicely. Now is the time we're going to jump in and do that beautification time lapse. Why don't you all just sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse. Let's reconnect here afterwards and we can recap our sculpture.
right, welcome back. And I give you the promenade at the Consular District. Yeah, the promenade. <laughs> I sure do love the way that this one turned out. This one was a lot of fun because I got to focus on form rather than function. Yeah, this was really a design heavy element today. And there were, there were a lot of details that we put into place. Um, a lot of hand placement of a lot of um, individual props and plants and trees and just lots of fine tuning all along the way. But gosh, I sure do love the way that this one turned out. Now, before we dive too deeply into this, I really want to take you on a little tour back across the bay. And in our previous episode, we were at Aviators Ridge. You guys may remember that, that we built this big residential area kind of up on this hill overlooking the airport. And one of the comments, actually a couple of comments, talked about how these homes that were up on this ridge just didn't have a very good view of the airport. And so I came back in and I thinned out the hickory and birch trees in this area and actually pushed the forest line down just a little bit and incorporated a lot more kind of wild scrub and bushes in this space. And so as you get into the homes up here, now you've got a better view of the airport. Maybe not entirely unobstructed, but certainly much better than it was because there were a wall of trees up here. So I thought that was a, a really good comment and a really good catch from a number of our viewers. You like this home here. He's got a great view of, uh, of the airport. So uh, a really good call out. I'm glad we could uh, make those adjustments and make an improvement there. So, so great catch. And then also you get to see a little bit more of the ridge now, now that we're not in the fall colors. I think it's just, it's always better. In my opinion, the summer mechanics are a lot better in this game than they are, uh, than the winter and the fall mechanics are. I just think it looks much more livable and, and much more, I don't know, desirable uh, in, the, in the summer months. So anyhow, there was Aviators Ridge. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. All right, jumping back across the bay to the promenade. And the promenade was, again, so much fun. Uh, you know, one of the things I want to do is before I dive in deeply here, I want to just zoom back across the bay here. This would be the view from the observation tower. Well, let's zoom out just a little bit here. Yeah. So from the observation tower, you can see this almost looks like an oriental rug. It's just this beautiful, elaborate, ornate look and feel making its way down here. And we took out all of those big, tall buildings on both sides here and put in place the low density office buildings. Now those office buildings will continue to level up and maybe get into about three or four stories. And I'm looking forward to doing that. And then as we build out in future episodes, Vesper Beach on this side and the old Northeast on this side, that's when we'll reintroduce some height kind of down along these sides here to create that valley look that I was discussing earlier. All right, let's jump back down in here. You'll see these little design elements, these kind of little curly Q design elements. And if those look familiar at all, it's because I got my inspiration from Hurricanes, Helen and Claire back over here in downtown. And I thought, let's weave in some of those hurricane looks and feels <laughs> kind of making their way down through there. And at the eye of each of those hurricanes, we've got a nice, beautiful Sylvester Palm and some beautiful flowers down here at the base. We did that all throughout this center section as it makes its way all the way on up to our, uh, our big government office there on the hill. Now, also are dotted in a number of these oval looking parks through here, these oblong parks. We got one, two, three there, and then another three further along. But as I zoom in here, this is where we got to have a lot of fun with all of the new props and the surfaces and so forth. Dropped in this decorative concrete service, which I think is really cool. And of course the fountain in, on there, and then these little corner planter boxes as well. Then on each of these little side elements here, I added benches, a pair of benches with a waste can in the middle, and you know, kind of made their way all the way around. I took advantage of the natural curve in the sidewalk here and put a curved flower bed in there and then just extended the natural geometric line coming off of that into this you know, angled block box here and, and so forth. Some di different flower textures. And then down along these little extra spaces here, I put in some bushes and some flower bushes as well. Those become nice, warm, inviting spaces and you can see somebody making their way through the park right now. I'll turn your attention to one of these smaller ones here. And these, I think, turned out really elegantly as well. Again, using this curved piece to frame up against that sidewalk and then using the benches as an extension of that angle piece coming out there. A nice little gathering spot, maybe a quiet place to just hang out and read a book and, and maybe do some people watching. Each of these Sylvester Palms that you see that kind of make their way along this little avenue here, they're all sitting with a nice little sand base and some bushes and, and flowers down along the base there. So just tried to finish them up a little bit just so that they were a little cleaner. 
And then we've got some rather large surface areas that we used here, but then I tried to break it up with some of these nice little these nice little planting alcoves. So you've got an oak tree here with some flowers and bushes there, and as you make your way to the next one, this is maybe a little bit more tropical look and feel with some extra palm trees in there. Again, some flowers and shrubs along with that oak tree. Our center section here, I changed out some of these roundabouts so that they're, they're kind of this pavement roundabout style with these little bushes and shrubs. And then I added some surface in there as just kind of a decorative element again. And as you jump back out here, you can see this roundabout and this roundabout also were updated to remove those trees out there out of there because they just weren't matching. And uh, I thought this was a cleaner look. And speaking of roundabouts, we tidied this up and just made it a grass roundabout. As you recall, we had this, this approach that comes up here towards our big government building, and I just I straightened it out a little bit. I came up here and I, and I made that wall come all the way around the government building, and then I leveled off the walking, I guess the pedestrian street that comes out here. Had a nice, you know, kind of framed up buttressing there, and then jumps across the, the highway, and then makes its way gently back down uh, to, our, to our promenade area there. We added some, some manicured lawns in a lot of these spaces too, just because I wanted those to really pop. And as you zoom out here, you can see not everything is manicured. So just these, these center run spaces are manicured off. And then I wanted to keep these horizontals to be kind of more raw or rustic in their form. And then also this centerpiece here, again, just so that it was a, a difference, a, an ele visual element that, that changed up a little bit. I had talked about making an elaborate walking gardens in here, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought about, let's just put in some natural vegetation in that space. And it becomes this lush tropical look. So it's not a big eyesore. It doesn't really get in your way. You can still appreciate this building that sits on the hill. And I just love that. I think this turned out perfectly elevating that building. But then you've got this lush, thick tropical area that makes its way around it. And it really kind of you know, highlights the fact that Pangasus Bay is, is kind of more of a tropical style location. Yeah. And then as you make your way around to our top five design element, it's the return of the Pangasus Bay Parrot. <laughs> yeah, we decided to put the Pangasus Bay Parrot back in here. And I think he's a great great welcoming uh, committee as you come into town here. It, it sits on this ridge pretty well here. I wanted this to be a little bit more sloped, but that's about about as sloped as we can get, just given the, you know, the, the state of the height there. And then I flanked him up with, again, some of this nice tropical vegetation on either side. Really makes it look like it's at home, and I think it becomes a really nice welcoming element as you look. Now let's, here's the shot, right? Looking across the train tracks, you've got the parrot, you've got the building, you've got the observation tower, all in alignment. And this, this is really what's fun about this. You know, this is a, this is almost a year in the making, and I had this in my mind the whole time that I wanted to have this kind of, this centered up alignment, making your way into this town. And and wow, I'm just super excited about this. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Boy, it's fun to see this part of town come to life finally. Now you're going to want to sit tight and you're going to want to stick around and watch the cinematics because those are always a treat. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful thing to, for us, area of town for us to show off today. I'm excited about that. Now, just as a reminder, this channel is nothing without you, our wonderful viewers. And so if you saw something that you liked today, please be sure to leave, leave us a comment below. I really love hearing from you. And also the engagement really helps with the algorithm to distribute our content to a much wider audience, which helps us grow. And of course, which helps us keep improving. I also want to give a special shout out to all of our members, both here on YouTube and on our Patreon site. Your generosity is much appreciated. Couldn't do this without you. And also while you're at it, Make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. Okay, well with that I'm going to bid you guys and gals a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>